you're leaning over several items, am I right? Yeah. Is your red purse there? It could be in front of my body right here. But what's shown here is not your purse. No, that's my backpack. And they also there's something black. That's my bag with my pumps in it. So that and then means there's my another purse bag. There's another bag on the other chair. No, that's a that's a jacket. So where is your purse? It looks like you've got a lot of things on a lot of chairs, but I don't see your purse. No, because the pictures they took before, the purse was probably in there. They're not showing it because somebody went behind and got it. I don't have any other questions, I, Judge I do. Walda. Yeah. These pictures that were taken of you show three or four chairs. Right. And there's not one purse in any of these chairs. Yeah, because you're not listening to what I'm saying. They took a lot of pictures, and there's only, like, three or four right there. If they took a lot of pictures, I think we would have or seen videos. someone in the backdrop. There's literally nobody other than you two. Okay, so it just disappeared out of the shop. Is that what you're telling me? I don't know what happened. I don't think you do either. And that's my point. So I came in with a purse. So, hold on, hold on, Ms. McNeil. Let's get to your countersuit. You say that after this whole ordeal, the plaintiff was going around in the community bad-mouthing you and your business. Tell me about that. Going around talking about my shop, they tore her head up, my styles wasn't no good, they didn't have no license, don't go to her shop, you know, they messed up people's hair. I mean, she just bad my, my shop. Did you hear that from any of your clients? I heard it from the streets, people in the streets. Did you feel the consequences of that? Did you... Well, yeah, I mean, I felt like I'm losing way. my customers it's already in the, in the hood. They don't even have customers. What do you mean they don't <laughs> have customers? I swear. Well, we had you. Yeah, that's about it. So were you going around the community bad-mouthing the defendant? No, and... I was not. I find that kind of hard to believe. No. You can't even, like, simmer down. I you told are people busting my, at the um, seams to tell us how My bad roommate, this... she knows my roommate, and they told me, my roommate said they only should have charged me $25 for me being a dummy. So you weren't going in the community saying anything about your items being lost, that they steal, they messed up my hair. You're saying you said nothing No, I'm not going to about... say that. I told people in my, in, my, in, my, in my positive direction, the program I'm in, I let them know that they messed my hair up around the corner, yeah. Not, in your, what... not in your program. I'm talking about no. out in the community. No, not out in the community, no. I do want to ask about this pain and suffering. You're asking for a lot of money. What is the pain and suffering that you... The pain and suffering mostly is that they got my identity. I I'm trying to understand the motive here. I'm trying to understand okay, what... Then, okay, I had to go through a lot to go back and forth to get all my paperwork yeah. back. That's a hassle, back. yes. It's a hassle to have to replace all of your all cards. All my cards. I understand that, but you also have to prove that they're responsible for that, and you haven't. They have to have my purse, and okay. that's... I wouldn't just come up here and say, oh, they stole my purse and my identity if they didn't. Is there anything else? All right, the parties are excused while we deliberate in this case. Thank you. This courtroom is now in recess. So, ladies... I believe that the plaintiff believes, with all of her heart, that somebody in that salon stole her purse. But based on what we have seen today, the evidence doesn't show that she ever had a purse. In whatever chair she claims she put it in, we don't see it. She's failed to prove that they are responsible for her purse going missing. So I'm inclined to dismiss her claim for her personal belongings for, for $1,200 because, again, her belongings are gone. Clearly, she had to replace them. She did show evidence of that. But she hasn't linked the purse being missing to the defendant. The hairstyling. I don't see any proof other than what she's saying here today, that she didn't like her hair. And to get a relaxer, color and style for $135 is good. Those pictures, she was skinning and grinning, like she said. Yeah. So I'm inclined to dismiss her claim, all of it. Now, as far as the countersuit is concerned, I do believe that she probably went around the neighborhood and badmouthed the, the salon and the salon owner. I'm not sure it rises to the level of giving the defendant $5,000. There's no proof other than she's saying she heard it in the streets. So. I agree with you in all respects. Okay. I think you usually defer to us on hair cases, though. Like, um, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but in addition, I, I agree with you. Yeah. No. So here's the only thing that troubles me. Do you believe that her stepdaughter was lying about overhearing the phone call? The way I look at those kind of issues, I say, is there any possibility that I, what I was said was misunderstood? I'm left just a little troubled by that because I found the plaintiff's witness to be the most level-headed, incredible witness. <laughs> but I agree with you. Maybe this was open to interpretation, right. what she said, like, I'll go to the back and get your purse for you and have it ready. And have then not realize that it. it wasn't actually wasn't there. there. Right. So I agree with you completely on dismissing the plaintiff's claim. I also believe that the plaintiff did go about town talking about the defendant, but I don't think there's been any proof that right. anything said damaged her or was necessarily defamatory. Right. So neither of them have carried their burden of proof. I think it's Great. a dismissal. So we, we have, have a verdict. verdict. Yes. We do.